Hi, my name is Tomasz Boszutek. Recently, I've published a video about reassignments in um, reassignments of tasks in Power Automate using Dataverse tables. And uh, as well, I mentioned in that video that I have already recorded a video about substitutions. Now, why about substitutions? Because uh, reassignments of tasks is very important in business approvals. And that is because very often you can face a situation when the current assignee is simply away, is on holidays, or maybe they have left the company and the tasks which they were assigned are simply waiting for their approval. And there is no way using user interface to simply reassign, reassign them to anyone else in the organization. So, uh, and if the tasks are not reassigned, then after 30 days, they will just fail uh, because of the timeout. And so the video I already have in my channel is mostly focusing on Dataverse as well, but in that video, I am simply showing you a scenario where I'm just like replacing a current assignee in a task record. And that is not very much okay. So in this video, what I want to focus on is how you can actually follow the proper steps of reassignment. So first, create a new approval request record, then mark the existing one as inactive so that there is um, this relationship between the old task and the new task with the lookups and so on. Just like I was showing you in the video about the reassignments. And as well, I want to show you like two scenarios where how you can create such a uh, substitution solution for your own. So first I will be showing you SharePoint uh, that you can see behind me already. Um, and then secondly, I will show you as well how you can use simply a Dataverse table. Now using Dataverse table is nothing really odd in this scenario because to make a reassignment we already need to have a premium license because to make a reassignment we need to simply write read and write data in dataverse tables and therefore using just another one dataverse table to hold information about the substitutions is just okay however um, i chose as well to show you how you can do that with sharepoint because uh, with SharePoint, you already have user interface for the business to enter information about the substitutions, to, um, to, to use them, to update them, and so on. Meanwhile, with Dataverse table, you, of course, need to create your own Power App application or let users to access Dataverse table directly using, for example, Excel as interface, which is not that very convenient and useful or maybe user-friendly as if this same work is done through SharePoint. All right, so um, let's go and see how that works. So first, um, here is this SharePoint table, or sorry, SharePoint list, that simply contains uh, four columns. Of course, you can add here many more columns like this, uh, like the reason for the substitution. Maybe the title can be shown. Now uh, you can as well add some kind of a check mark that confirms that this substitution has been processed or not so that for the future, those already processed uh, substitutions won't be taken anymore and much, much more. So it's like really up to you what is your business scenario and what you want to achieve. However, now for this very, um, let's say, easy uh, demonstration, I just decided to make four columns. So I'll create a new row. Uh, in this row, I'll again make a substitution for John. And uh, I'll again use myself as the substitute. And this time, let's make a substitution from today until, for example, pff, I don't know, end of next week. So uh, now I have the currently uh, valid substitution. So the next step, what I have to do is to go to the Cloudflow and to simply create a task, uh, to create a task. Sorry, it wasn't in a Cloudflow. It was, uh, of course, in just flow. So here I need to run a flow that is going to assign a task to John Researcher and other employees. So here is this workflow. Let's see what it does at the moment. Let's call it like that. And let's remove myself from the list of assignees. And that's that having said, let's trigger it and let's save it and trigger it. Right, so uh, at that moment, if I navigate to the approvals, I should already see that there is uh, a send approval from my account, right? It is sent to John and Stefan. Let's make just another one run. 
So I'll open it and let's call it now the second task for reassignment and again run it. So right now I should already have two tasks which are assigned to John and Stefan. And now uh, let's, yep, I do have, so I have, I have none, right? Nothing. So now let's focus on the first scenario to reassignment. So here I have uh, the check and set substitutions for SharePoint. Let me show you how it works. What does this flow do? It's not very complex. It's really following what I've shown you in the previous video about the reassignments. So first, it is being triggered every day at 10 a.m., right? Secondly, it's getting all items from the substitutions list using this all data filter to get them from, for the dates, which are to get only those where today is between the date start and date end, right? Now, another thing you could do is to create another flow or maybe even to extend this flow that is going to run as well for all these substitutions that expired and then to simply reassign the task back from the substitute to the original, uh, to the original assignee. But that is again something you can really develop on your side if that is something that your uh, business scenarios are uh, requiring you to do. So next, for each of such font items, in my case there should be two, um, is first getting the information about the person who is going to be substituted. And here I'm using this filter query that uh, uses users' uh, email address to find their uh, ID within the users table. The same I'm doing for the person who is going to be the substitute. And then uh, I'm querying the approvals request table to find all the uh, requests which are assigned to the person who is marked as the substitute for or the substitution for and which are still active. Because there can be like hundreds of other tasks which might be already inactive, but uh, well, we just want to take those which are active, which are still waiting for the approval. And next, for each such task, task, the workflow is simply marking this one as inactive. And that's really important because the next time uh, you run this workflow, um, the fact that you've marked these items as inactive will help to remove them from the filter query uh, that is getting all those active tasks. And last step is that it's creating a new task, which is, again, following this um, logic behind uh, reassignments. So it's, uh, well, it's creating this new task that is active, that has uh, that is reassigned from lookup set to the previous task, which is now inactive. Uh, as well, it has this reassigned from index and it, it as well has uh, the system users set to the first person uh, who was found in that table uh, from, sorry, that was returned by the action get substitute ID. So um, that is their ID. And so that's it. So it is simply creating new tasks, removing or ma marking existing tasks as uh, inactive and doing that for uh, in a loop for all existing active approval requests items assigned in this scenario to Stefan. Okay, ready? So let's, uh, let's run it. Let's run it now. Well, depending on the number of course of tasks you have, it will be running faster or shorter time or longer time. In my case, it should run really uh, quite short. So I said it has two records, two items that it has to process. Uh, the first one is uh, obviously the number one, the second one is number two. And for all those two tasks, uh, uh, sorry, um, here are those two, two tasks and uh, it simply marked them uh, first as inactive, secondly uh, as active, right? So then it created the, the second uh, approval task. And uh, the reason why it uh, shows you two items, it's like it found two items in that list, which is odd. Oh, no, it's not odd because uh, the end date of the second substitution is actually uh, showing a date from March. So it's still okay. So it was my bad that I didn't change the end date in the first record. So the first run for the first record actually reassigned all these tasks from John to myself. And possibly the second one is not going to do anything because there should be no active tasks assigned to John. 
and that's correct. So, uh, yeah, sorry for confusion. Uh, all, all went fine, right? So the, this first run, which uh, which actually grabbed the active tasks assigned to John Researcher, um, it actually it actually marked them uh, as as, as uh, reassigned. And now, once I navigate back to the list of sent approvals, you can see that these two tasks are now assigned to myself and Stefan. So John is no longer an assignee. Uh, under my received list of items, I can see these two items as well. All right, so that was the first test. Now, uh, let me just generate some more of these approval tasks. Let's now use number three and four. So then I will be able to simply go and show you how the approach with Dataverse could work. Right, now again, send. What can I see here? Well, nothing yet. Let refresh, do a change. So now it's three and four. Again, there is John Researcher as one of the assignees. Uh, all right, now I just, I will just close uh, that flow. And let me open now the second one, which is used to manipulate reassignments in Dataverse, so to check and set substitutions in Dataverse. Now, this workflow is very, very similar. It is as well triggered by the recurrence, running one, uh, once uh, per each day. But the difference is that it's querying the data not from the SharePoint list, but from the substitutions table. But here again, uh, it is trying to find all the records which are created for, I mean, that, that where the current date is between uh, the start and the end of the substitution. And now to show you the table, I have here this uh, Excel file opened. And what I need to do is to simply create a new entry. So first title. Then I'll just copy these two lookups here. Then let's set uh, that it will be from today until uh, to maybe not tomorrow, but end of end of February, and I will as well um, copy these two information too. So um, yep, that should be fine. So just one more check. That is John. Uh, here is John. John is here. Uh, all right. So uh, now it's time for publishing. Publish successful. Uh, and with that, I can now simply run this workflow. So after it grabs all those existing substitutions, the next step it's doing is again getting approvals, all existing approvals for this substitute uh, who is indicated uh, as the owner. Uh, sorry, as the, as the person in that uh, Excel sheet uh, for, for whom this substitution is created and simply uh, is getting information about all those tasks which are assigned to the person. Then again, it's making them inactive and creating a new tasks which are simply looking up that uh, other task which now is marked as inactive uh, and as well are having the owner set to the person who is indicated as a substitute. So in that term, myself. Okay, so run and, and <laughs> show us what you can do. So that should be just one record, right? There's just one, one, one row on the substitutions found. And there should be two tasks, which is okay, uh, which is fine. So again, uh, it seems that the workflow ran fine. It made these two items, these two tasks, which were assigned to John as inactive and has created two new tasks assigned to myself. So now once I move back again to send and refresh this page, I should already see that the three and four is as well assigned to myself, not to John anymore. And that is correct. So again, number, uh, I mean, uh, as assigned task for reassignment tasks uh, and I mean, three and four are now assigned to myself and Stefan. And so uh, with that, I just wanted to uh, summarize the, this whole presentation or this whole demo. So I hope that you find it useful and that it will really help you to create your own mechanisms for substitutions because there is nothing really worse than a workflow that is stuck because of, uh, because of the assignees not available to complete their tasks. So keep in mind that having whichever mechanism to 
help you reassign tasks from one employee to another is very crucial if you want your business workflows to run smoothly. And uh, well, yeah, thank you very much. I hope that this video really inspired you to, to build your own uh, mechanisms. If you have any comments, if you have any comments or questions, obviously, then write them down in, in the comments section below the video. And please subscribe and mark your thumbs up, rate the video. And thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.